temperature drop across the condenser. So let's take a look at this condenser. I have it at the discharge of the compressor just before it enters the condenser and the liquid line coming out. We have roughly 33 degrees difference, 81 degrees coming out, 113 going in. If we would see like 70 PSI difference, we probably know we have a problem that if, especially if you know you have a full charge everything works best for diagnosis on a full charge not a partial charge but a full charge there are conditions where your temperature and your pressure can go up when you're low on refrigerant and then you'll get sub cooling through here. your condenser will actually cool the refrigerant more than it should that it normally happen and it'll throw a big ratio off by there being a low refrigerant charge this is why all diagnostics get done with a full charge of refrigerant unless it's super blatantly off obvious but even sometimes that could throw you for a loop always discharge and recharge it's really fast if you have the right equipment it only takes a few minutes and uh, to completely discharge and recharge your system and then do your diagnosis so we got 33 here let's go take a look at what our suction temperature is so we'll take this one off there that's the one that's links right there you'll see that start to drop i believe really slowly We'll go back here, see what it is coming out of right there, right on there. Let's see what our suction line is. That's a little warm, so we're going down 40 degrees. Now, if we had a restriction, oh, I wonder if I could show you guys a restriction. Okay, where's where's my, oh, I can't. Oh, that's all solid. I was hoping there was some line I could crimp off. I could if I got way down there. But let's see, uh, if you crimp off this line, you can simulate a temperature difference, say between here and down there, if you partially crimp off this line. If you really crimp off this line and stop 100% of the flow, there'll be no temperature change because there will be no passage. So the refrigerant that sits here will become the same temperature the refrigerant on the other side because there's no travel and the ambient heat will cool that off. I've, I had that happen in one video. So we're at 40. 40 degrees at this point right here. So let's come all the way over here. And what are we down here? If I could do this without my thumb going into, you wanna hear a thumb hit a fan? <laughs> I've done that in a few videos. There we go. And that's hot, just burnt myself, that's cooling. What are we down there? We are 47 degrees down at the compressor almost 48 48 almost 49 this is how much heat and this is not even a closed hood it's not even hot this is with a open hood 50 degrees so we were 40 degrees there we are 50 de 51 degrees just before it enters the compressor so we picked up basically 11 degrees of superheat from where it exits into the engine compartment at the evaporator right to where below where it goes into the container and that's all heat energy that is picked up through the aluminum lines and a little bit of rubber it's not as conductive as aluminum but that's wasted energy that the compressor has to compress the condenser has to reject because of heat picked up by the metal lines that are in the engine compartment now it'd be greater if it was a hot summer day here in utah arizona texas whatever it's 105 degrees outside you're in, especially if you're in one of those cars, it's 250 degree coolant air going into the engine compartment. The hood is closed. You're in stop and go traffic. You're losing a lot of your capacity just by the refrigerant lines. So that's that right there. And then if I take this liquid, well, I won't do that right now. I got to get off to the next car, but I want to do some um, voltage, uh, not voltage drop, <laughs> pressure drop tests and temperature drop tests like make a restriction at the suction line here's a good one so if i take this line right there that's your discharge line off your compressor now let's say that's 100 and something yep 116 so that's 116 degrees right there and we got 116 degrees right there 17 117 116 we almost have a one degree drop that's just by the surface a pair of pliers around here well I don't like to use these but I'm gonna use these I have a pair of hose pliers but I'm gonna go 
just a little bit. Uh, if my hand is strong enough. What's going on there? What's going on there? What do you see? You see that going down to 113, 112? I'm really struggling to 111, 110, 19. Oh God, I can't hold that no more. Did you see that temperature drop? That is temperature drop, just like you have voltage drop. I had resistance there. So I was consuming, I was, uh, had my resistance. I was becoming like an orifice tube, a pressure reduction device because I was squeezing it off and you seen that go down. And that's how you can do, but use, use something that is very rounded. Don't use pliers like I just did. Um, but use hose clamps and you can test yourself and see what the pressure drop does. And that's how you find uh, linings inside the hoses that delaminate, become like a heart valve and actually stop or restrict flow. And they could be intermittent. They could not close off and then five minutes later close off. And then you shut it off and start up again and it works normally for five or 10 minutes and then the little inner lining moves a certain direction and restricts the flow and you get warm out of your dash again. They're not always 100% constant. And then if it's the inner lining, is 100% closing off all the refrigerant. I mean 100%. There will be no temperature drop because there'll be no flow of refrigerant. See you guys later.